Tim, welcome to Watch You Want, thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Panerai Luminor 1950 Regatta 3 days chronograph flyback, 47mm in brushed titanium, you can see this PAM 526 on our website watchyouwant.com, purchase it if you like, and if you enjoy these videos please subscribe to our YouTube channel Watch You Want Inc. Now, 47 millimeters does not tell the whole story here. You can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch takes up every spare square centimeter of space. I would say that although rated at a 47, it wears closer to a 50. This is one of the rare cases of a Panerai Luminor that actually wears as big, if not bigger than its rated size. It's usually the opposite, but here two very specific reasons come into play. First and foremost, the thickness of the watch, 19.3 millimeters. It has an epic, imposing stance on the wrist, more like a 48 millimeter Hublot King Power or a Royal Oak Offshore 44 millimeter maybe even one of the larger wearing 44 millimeters, something along the line of uh, a Grand Prix. This is a truly epic special edition watch. Launched in 2014 in a limited series of 700, it was that year's installment in the Panerai Classic Yachts Challenge series. Running from 2005 to the present, this model, the PAM 526, ranks as one of the most complex examples one of the most feature-laden models in that series, and at a full 56.6 millimeters lug-to-lug, -lug, again, it just looks immense. But in full brush titanium, I want to emphasize that the fit of the watch is comfortable. From an ergonomic standpoint, it works. From a physical standpoint, the impression on the wrist is immense. If you like that look, big is better, well, this is as good as big gets. And I want to emphasize that the strap is a big part of the fit because it uses a bellows style bend. After the lugs, which by the way do allow it to pull down straight, you get this pleated style bellows design in the rubber strap, well suited to the offshore, quite literally, intent of this watch. It's both rugged and comfortable. Now a large, fully brushed titanium, traditional Panerai trapezoidal pin buckle makes setting and resetting easy. And to the credit of Panerai designers, it does have both the bellows as well as a molded in relief channel, a rounded relief channel, so that if sand or sweat or grit water gets stuck under there on a hot day during activity, whether you're sailing or simply seaside, the comfort of this strap is excellent. Even just testing it here in the light box, I can feel how it really enhances the ergonomic experience of this watch when experienced by a smaller wrist. I could wear this watch comfortably even if it does fairly dwarf my forearm. The look of the watch is distinctly different than a conventional Panerai Luminor. While those tend to carry a little bit of the grim demeanor of their combat diver forebears, this one is sporting, contemporary, upbeat, cheerful, colorful. You can see there is a specially graduated tachometer scale around the outer circumference, and that's specifically for measuring the speed of fairly slow-moving nautical craft, namely sailing. Now, the Classic Yachts Challenge is a modern Panerai nautical tradition that the company has established to sort of tie the, the firm's reputation to the sea, even as their combat diver days and Italian Navy days sort of recede into history, and it's been very effective at doing so, as well as acting as a platform for the launch of annual limited editions. Now, in addition to the tachometer, so when we start up the chronograph, you can effectively time sailboats in motion and get their speed over the course. It also features a unique regatta countdown feature, and that's the purpose of this second chronograph hand right here. It is a chronograph minutes hand. When activated, it will count down, not up, but down from any number between one and five minutes. That's part of the principle of regatta starts. You're typically giving a start, given a start time within a relatively shallow bracket of minutes. And depending on when you're going to start, you're going to want some sort of reference because sailboats don't have instant maneuverability to put yourself in position to start the course so that you don't have to tack, come about, or otherwise waste your momentum as you begin your leg, your first leg of the race. Now I'm going to activate one of the signature features of the chronograph, which is its flyback function. It is both a regatta timer as well as a flyback chronograph. Now I can stop it conventionally, I can reset it, and then I can demonstrate how you set the one to five countdown. You can see with each press, 
of the regatta adjustment function, I can toggle one minute. So when I actually start the timer, there's the flyback that I can use to reset it. If I start the timer from, let's say, four minutes, now the chronograph seconds start, the countdown hand will show me four minutes to elapse, and ideally, as I start homing in on two, one, and zero, I'll be getting my yacht into position, more likely my sailing dinghy, into position to start the course. So there's a lot of complexity here. I have a chronograph, it's also a flyback, and it's also a customizable countdown timer. Now, again, I'll note that when the chronograph is in action, if I want to reset all hands, both, const both chronograph seconds and the timer, I can simply press the flyback and it's restored the index at zero. This is a very complicated watch and achieving this programmable regatta timer with flyback chronograph is the main reason why this watch is the better part of 20 millimeters thick. Now you can see other features of the dial and it is a traditional sandwich dial with a compound construction that is a sandwich, a loomed stencil or rather a loomed disc underneath a cutout stencil. The indices, the Arabic numerals, those are on the stencil portion. The loomed disc sits beneath, gives it great depth when it's glowing at night. Very legible. Panerai cleverly integrates all of this complexity while keeping the center dial fairly open and uncluttered. Now you can see there's a lot going on in terms of complication. I've got my adjuster for the programmable countdown. I've got the flyback slash reset pusher. I've got the chronograph stop start, but what I also have on the case back is Panerai's quick release system. Now I spoke about ergonomics earlier, but since 2007 Panerai has been spreading this quick release lug system across the range. No longer do you have to screw into the lugs to remove or insert a new strap. Strap swapping is part of the fun of owning a Panerai watch. As good as this example is ergonomically, if I wanted a more upscale calf or alligator leather, I wouldn't have to take a screwdriver to the lugs and risk the finish. Here, with this new generation system, I simply depress the pusher and slide the pin bar through. Very durable, but also very user friendly, and you don't have to invoke a jeweler to do it safely. Now, the movement right here, caliber 9100R, is co-equally with the dial, the star of the show. It is a monstrosity. 328 parts, 37 jewels, crafted entirely in-house, housed within a 100-meter water-resistant yacht-ready case. This movement is almost 10 millimeters thick, with layer upon layer of complexity added. You want a long power reserve? 72 hours via twin mainspring barrels. You want durability? It has a free-sprung balance, Rolex style. You want precision. This one's been running chronometer spec timing on our chronoscope, and it is a in-house movement that is also subject to the Dubois Laboratory Chrono Fiable test, so it has that credential as well. Now, it hacks, so when you pull the crown, it does stop the balance for precise synchronization. After all, what use is a precise movement if you can't synchronize it to a known accurate reference time? Now, more than that, you already know about the flyback chronograph. You already know about the programmable regatta timer. The watch is also durable and efficient in the manner that it energizes all this complexity. 72-hour power reserve charged up by bidirectional winding. Panerai got plenty of experience with the old Valju 7750s in its original Luminor automatic models and decided it wanted to dispense with that unidirectional rotor wobble. Thus, the fully engaged bidirectional winding prevents the winding rotor from freewheeling and creating a wobble on the wrist in either direction and it's backed up by unlubricated ceramic bearings not only are they maintenance free but they improve the efficiency of the winding system so you can get to that 72 hour top off just as quickly as possible and in the tradition of the luminor models we still have the device protecting the crown as effective as ever at protecting the crown and for that matter distinctive good looks you can see refinement has been brought to the old device through the use of a roller bearing mounted in the cam that actually secures the crown. So opening and closing it is now more fluid than before and also doesn't continuously grind metal against metal. As ever, because it is a lever that unlocks the crown and not the act of threading it out as with a screw down, you can easily manipulate the unloaded crown once the lever is open without um, having to worry about getting purchase on it when your hands are wet, sweaty, or if you're wearing gloves. 
So this is both practical in the sense that it protects the crown from blows and quite user-friendly in the sense that you'll never have trouble winding or setting the watch. This is the Panerai Luminor 1950 Regatta 3 days chronograph flyback, 47 millimeters in brushed titanium, a limited edition of 700. You can see it, and if you like, you can set sail with this PAM 526 on our website, watchyouwant.com.